What's cracking, big dogs? Week 14 wrapped up in the books. Playoff season is officially upon us. We bike, so let's get into the fantasy football injuries. The top waiver wire ads for week 15, so y'all can bring the ship back to the crib. Let's go! Mad injuries this week. A ton of fucking injuries. People need to eat their goddamn vegetables. I don't know what they're doing throughout the week. We got concussions. We got hamstring pulls. I don't understand with the technology and shit nowadays. I feel like people are in worse shape than fucking ever. Like, they look better. I mean, don't get me wrong. 5% body fat. Y'all look good as hell naked, probably. But it ain't doing a damn thing on the field. Whatever. Let's just get into the goddamn video. So, let's move out to Green Bay where we see Aaron Rodgers suffering a little calf injury. Nothing major, uh, nothing to really have to worry about thus far. He said it's not as bad as the one that was that he had two years ago in which we saw he was very hobbled and he had a lot of trouble running around. But with that said, he didn't even miss a game two years ago. So he says it's not as bad as that one. He didn't miss a game back then, so he should have no trouble playing this week and playing going forward, so I would not have any any worries about A-Rod out in Green Bay. Again, Chicago this week, he'll be a high-end QB1, so don't worry about that. Next, we got Ryan Tannehill, another QB, one that actually doesn't matter, though. Brain is MCL and ACL. He's more than likely going to be done for the year, at least for the regular season. If they happen to make the playoffs, maybe he'll make a return. Uh, he's going to get a second opinion today, or might happen yesterday. I didn't see a new report come out or anything for it, but Ryan Tannehill not... A big fantasy impact for y'all, because I hope you're not playing Ryan Tannehill in your lineups. Anyways, he's probably going to miss the rest of the regular season. Matt Moore will be the starting quarterback down in South Beach, which is going to be a downgrade, obviously, to Devonta Parker, to Jarvis Landry, to any of the pass catchers there. JJ, I would say, gets a boost in terms of volume. I'm sure his efficiency will drop a little bit, but I'd give him a minor a minor bump there. So, Ajayi gets a little edge there. Everything else sucks for Miami. Next, we got Mr. Matt Forte. Snap, crackle, and pop. That's what he said he heard in his knee. He exited the game. Bilal Powell took over as the workhorse there in New York and absolutely dominated the game. Right around 180 scrimmage yards. Two tutties. I mean, obviously, those aren't the numbers you're going to find from Powell every every uh, every week. But Matt Forte, it's looking very iffy. His week 15 status. If you're a Matt Forte owner, you're probably going to have to find another back. He won't be at full strength even if he does play. And if he does... You'd imagine Powell will eat into that work after the big game that he just had. Another big, big name running back, Melvin Gordon. He sprained his hip and he also sprained his knee. So the original reports were that he's day to day. Then we heard week to week. And that's the latter is probably what we're actually looking at. I would be shocked if he played this week. So Melvin Gordon, you're probably going to be without him for at least the first week of your fantasy playoffs. You expect Kenneth Farrow to get a good amount of the work and then Ronnie Hillman also so I that that backfield is going to be a little split I'll talk to that talk about that in the waiver wire portion of this video also I started putting the waiver I made a chart like a waiver wire chart rather than you having to watch this entire video you can just go to the website bdgeat.com and there's a waiver wire chart I'll do each week that says you know the top pickups by position how much fab money you should throw on them and that kind of stuff so if you want to just head over to the site and that will be there uh, so Melvin Gordon unlikely to play in week 15 but we'll obviously we'll have to see some more reports. Shane Vereen out in New York left with a concussion he is in the protocol uh, even if he comes back, I, I, that, that's just not a, an RB situation I really want any part of. Another NFC East RB, Darren Sproles, also finds himself in the concussion protocol. Keep keep an eye out for the reports and haven't, you know, haven't heard anything about whether or not he's going to be shooting up for next week. Also in Philly, Wendell Smallwood got placed on the IR with a sprained MCL. How the tables have turned. How did Ryan Matthews go from the only injured running back on the team to the only healthy one in a matter. It's incredible how fantasy football works. It really, I don't even know why I waste my time trying to project shit, why I waste my time drafting teams, because literally whatever happens is not what you expect to happen. I don't even know why I'm wasting my time doing this video. So Wendell Smallwood out for the year obviously boosts up Ryan Matthews. If Darren Sproles misses time, that also does too. So Dante Moncrief, this is an interesting one. He injured the hamstring or 
you know, re-aggravated the, hamst the hamstring that has kind of been bothering him the last few weeks. So I normally wouldn't say it's a big deal because Pagano says it's day to day, but they did sign Devin Street off the practice squad, which definitely mirrors some uh, room for concern. So definitely keep an eye out on Moncrief's status. I feel like it's going to probably come down to a game, game time decision. If I had to guess, I would say he's not going to be suiting up in week 15. So T.Y. Hilton, boom, Philip Dorsett, eh, not really, but Dwayne Allen, a nice red zone target for him. Let's move over to the Dirty Birds down the dirty, dirty south. We got Julio and Sanu both missed week 14's games against the Rams. Clearly, they didn't even need them asses. Julio was battling that turf toe. Dan Quinn said that, both, like the most fucking useless information, they both could possibly practice on a limited basis on Wednesday. We'll have to see what their practice schedule is like this week. To be honest, they get the 49ers this week. They didn't need any help against the Rams. So it wouldn't shock me if they sat both of these receivers again, because they don't need them, clearly. Uh, and, you know, it might be smart to rest them up for a playoff run, considering the Falcons are, are right there in the thick of things. So definitely uh, room for concern there. Keep an eye on the reports in terms of their practice time. And lastly, let's look at Jordan Reed, because he's TE1 material. Was not on Sunday. Uh, I think he hauled in like one catch for 10 yards. He clearly was hobbled by the shoulder injury. He's not someone I'm, he's not a set and set and forget kind of guy. You're not just throwing him in your lineup now because he's Jordan Reed. He's got the name. He's clearly hurt by the shoulder and that's clearly going to be a factor going forward. We'll keep an eye out on practice reports. He only played like 10 of 42 snaps. I think it was in the game. So he's not getting a lot of play time. I mean, I'm assuming that would increase, I guess, next week, but it's not looking like he's going to be a full-time player, so that kind of boosts him down to a tight end, too. So there's definitely going to be better options than Jordan Reed for your your fantasy playoffs, man. I know it sucks, but, yeah. Imagine you had, imagine your team was, like, Forte, Gordon, Julio, Jordan Reed. Like, that's a team that certainly can get into the playoffs, so no questions asked. You would be fucked this week. All right, well, that kind of wraps up the injuries. Uh, if I forgot anyone, comment below and I'll, I'll give you whatever newest update I've heard about them. All right, so let's get into the waiver wires. As always, we start off with the quarterbacks. It's pretty slim pickings here this week in terms of free agents, in terms of streamers. Uh, first one I would like to touch on is Sam Bradford out of Minnesota. He's not someone I love. And most of the time, these quarterbacks are going to be, you know, only for deeper leagues because for the most part, you know, a running back goes down or a wide receiver goes down, someone steps up. You don't have that luxury in the quarterback position because of the nature of the position. If someone's good, he's not going to be a backup. He's going to be starting somewhere. So start off with Sam Bradford. He threw for nearly 300 yards and a touchdown this past week, and now he gets two nice matchups against the Colts and the Packers, two of the worst pass defenses in the league. He's got some weapons around him now. All these guys are healthy now, and they're ready to go. So, you know, it, he could put up 275 yards, a couple touchdowns, a decent streaming option for this week. Now, my number one pickup for quarterbacks this week would be Colin Kaepernick. I know he's been an absolute fucking dud for y'all the last couple weeks, and he played like shit again this week, but he gets a Falcons defense. A Falcons team without Desmond Trufant, by far their best pass defender on the outside. And these Falcons are coming off a 42-point game. You have to assume that they're going to throw up a ton of points again against this 49er defense, meaning obviously there's going to be a ton of opportunities for Kaepernick to throw the ball, for him to run the ball, for that offense to, you know, gun it and, and shoot. And they, they're going to have to put up any high number of points to even come close to competing in this game. So I like the fact that he's going to put up a lot of garbage time points. And, you know, Kaepernick's a guy that can explode any week for 80 to 100 rushing yards and a touchdown on that front. So there's definitely potential there. He's someone that I like as a, as a flyer, but definitely some big time upside for Cap. Next up, we have Alex Smith, the guy that always, always, always finds a way onto this list because no one owns him. He's always on the free agent wire. You pick him up for a week and then you drop him because you don't want him anymore. This week he gets Tennessee. And over the last three games, Tennessee has been awful. Their cornerbacks have been terrible. They're averaging 300 yards and two touchdowns against them from quarterbacks. And those are from Trevor Simeon, Matt Barkley, and Andrew Luck. So two pretty bad quarterbacks on that list. And over the last three games, they've led up over 300 yards and two touchdowns to all of those quarterbacks. So Alex Smith, third streamer this week at the quarterback position. All right, running backs, where things are starting to pick up and get interesting. These move so quickly from week to week, you know, there could be nothing on the wire last week, and now there could be 10 fucking guys that could potentially be RB1s for your team in the first week of the fantasy playoffs. 
this week a big week because of the injuries. So we had Matt Forte go down. Bilal Powell has to be the hottest ad of the week. He went for nearly 180 yards from scrimmage. Got the end zone twice, two tutties. He gets the Dolphins next week. Not a great rushing defense. So if, you know, a lot of this is obviously dependent on Matt Forte coming back. Uh, if he's not back, uh, you could almost pencil Powell in for low-end RB1 numbers, if not high-end RB1 numbers, because he'll be getting almost all of the workload there. Next up, Kenneth Farrell out in San Diego. I believe that's that means a whale's vagina. I'm going to cut that. So, obviously, Melvin Gordon went down with the hip injury slash knee injury slash all these. He has like six sprains that he's dealing with. Unlikely to play, obviously you're gonna have to monitor that, but Kenneth Faro saw 22 touches, so he had 16 carries, six catches, only mustered up 78 yards, but the workload is definitely nice to see there. They got a Raiders defense next week. Raiders, another team that's gonna be scoring a lot of points, so you'd have to think, you know, it's gonna be a high-powered offense on both sides. And uh, Farrow's gonna be splitting the work with Ronnie Hillman, which makes me a little more skeptical of Farrow because we don't really know if the guy's any good. We just like the fact that he's Gonna get a get a big workload, you know. So Farrell, another another nice pickup at the running back position. If you're looking to fill fill someone in there, I, I like him as like a low end RB two, maybe a high end flex play for this upcoming week. If Melvin Gordon misses time, of course. Another name who's been on my list for the last like three weeks should have been picked up already in your league, but if he's not, it's your boy out in Baltimore, Kenneth Dixon is clearly taking over that role there. He had 19 touches in their week. 14 game, 11 of them being carries, 8 of them being receptions. Huge for the PPR play. I told you he was more athletic than West and he's a better pass catcher. He ended up with something like 80 something yards from scrimmage and he got in the end zone. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot to like there. He's clearly the more explosive, uh, better option for Baltimore in the backfield. So I'd assume he would continue to see the featured workload there. And he's going against a Philly defense next week. They're allowing over 100 yards rushing per game to opponents, which is not a huge number. Philly's defense is not uh, a great matchup for any running back in particular, but you know, they're, they're bottom, they're middle of the barrel, I should say. I'm not scared of the matchup, and I like Dixon this week as an RB2 because he's going to, you know, he outtouched Terrence West by a ton. Terrence West only got, I think, like four, four carries or something like that. Two carries, four receptions. So the workload's significantly skewed in the favor of Dixon, the rookie. A little blast from the past. Ty Montgomery is another good pickup at the RB position. Clearly an RB now. Mike McCarthy came out and said he's been an RB. He hasn't been in a fucking wide receiver meeting in over two months, he said. So he's an RB. Uh, he got nine carries. He actually got a goal line score. He caught three balls. So he's a versatile player. This is the player we were getting like five weeks ago. And now that James Starks is basically out of the mix, you know, they saw him doing shit. So they benched him, as they should be doing. Ty Montgomery is taking over as, not the feature running back, because uh, Christine Michael also saw a significant workload there. So it was, it was 10 carries to 9 carries in favor of Michael. But Ty Montgomery is, I think he has a nice floor of double-digit touches. Excuse me while I don't answer this phone and just probably pick it up and hang it up. And we back, and we back, and we back, and we back. So yeah, Ty Montgomery, they got a nice matchup against the Bears in week 15. Could be a good play for you as uh, I had to consider him a flex play right now. There's not a lot of other running backs I'm jumping on this week. Uh, there are a couple names that kind of, you know, come to my head. Maybe like TJ Yeldon because Denard Robinson's out Chris Ivory was out and this is completely dependent on the injury of course Yeldon got a pretty big workload against the Vikings he saw 17 carries also added some receptions uh and you know handled a nice workload gets the Texans this week a tough run defense but if you know if Ivory's out again then Yeldon should handle the featured workload there I mean you could do worse in your RB or your flex spot than 17 carries Am I right? So that's going to wrap up the running backs. And as I said, I'm going to put the waiver wire sheet on the website so you could go check that out. And there's more numbers and money for fab and those kind of things on there. So you could just take a, take a gander. Now we move to the wide receiver position. And my pickup of the week at this position, if, if Malcolm Mitchell is not already picked up, he's the number one priority in that New England offense. He was my number one priority last week. He ended up finding the end zone again last night on Monday Night Foosball. He should be picked up, but if he's not... Definitely go grab him because he's going to be a huge part of that offense as long as Gronk is out taking deep shots and whatnot. But I want to move to Atlanta. So Taylor Gabriel, obviously we're talking about Sanu and Julio. We have no idea if they're going to suit up. We haven't really got any updates on them other than they might practice tomorrow. So we don't know shit about them. They are playing the Niners. Again, this is a game that they could easily win without either of those wide receivers. So it would make sense for them to rest them in favor of you know their week 16 17 matchups or the playoff run so taylor gabriel 
had a pretty big game. He scored a nice long 65 yard touchdown. And those are the type of plays that he's capable of doing each and every week. He's a complete speed. He's like a Tyree Kill player. He's not as good as Tyree Kill. I ain't saying that, but he's a good player. Uh, they're going to be, you know, manufacturing touches for. Taylor Gabriel, especially if those wide receivers are out. He saw six targets, turned it into 82 yards and a tutty. But going forward, you know, they get the 49ers at home, a game they should score 35 points without a problem. Then they get the Panthers, and then I think they get the Saints after that. So it's like, it's a beautiful schedule if, if, you, got, if you have a piece of that offense going forward. Another name that was on the list last week, Nontrell Inman, now has back-to-back to back games with touchdowns like he's on the color lethal weapon. After scoring a tutty, uh, he caught six passes for 71 yards. He's had uh, three nice games in a row now. And obviously that San Diego offense is gonna, you know, shift production each week to different receivers, but he's looking like a very stable part of that offense. Uh, he's done a very good job the last few weeks and now he, Gets some juicy, juicy, sorry, my mailman was coming up. I'm like, oh, maybe he's got some good shit for me. Probably fucking Bills. So now he gets the Raiders, then he gets the Browns. That is huge right there. That week 16 matchup, that championship week matchup is against the fucking Browns. What a time to be dead. Next wide receiver pickup out in New York. Oh, I'm talking about the Giants. I'm talking about the Jets. Yes, I understand. I would never watch a Jets game at this point, but there are some dudes worth rostering. Besides the running back and besides Brandon Marshall, Robbie Anderson, a very underrated name. He's a good playmaker. He's super athletic. He's long. He's lean. He's making plays. Now he has back-to-back -back weeks of, I guess, breakout weeks. Bryce Petty seems to love him. Two weeks ago, he had 12 targets, turned that into four for 61 and a touchdown. And this last week against the 49ers, he had six receptions on 11 targets for 99 yards. So he's had 23 targets over the last two games. Uh, averaging, what's that, like 80 yards receiving, and he scored a touchdown. So, you know, he gets the Dolphins next week and a struggling pass defense. So he's got a juicy matchup. Robbie Anderson is a guy that Bryce Petty loves. Uh, a nice wide receiver three, possibly mm, high-end wide receiver four flex play. And there's other guys, you know, that want to touch on. I don't want to get into each of them because they, they continually, continually. Is that a word, continually, or is it just continuously? Yeah. That's where I'm at right now. That wind up on this list and they're kind of interchangeable. You know, I don't want to keep explaining the same dudes and why you should pick them up. So it's guys like Pierre Garcon, Cameron Meredith, you know, JJ Nelson and Michael Floyd. They're doing the same kind of things week in and week out. And they're just, they're kind of dart plays uh, with good matchups or bad matchups, depending on that. And that's how you play. The Cardinals do go against the Saints this week at home. Nelson coming off a two touchdown performance. Obviously a big game, a lot of fantasy points because of those, but a little inconsistent. You could do worse than either of those guys against the Saints this week. And I've touched on Teddy Ginn before. You know I like him. I like him for his big playability. I like him because Cam Newton continuously is airing the ball out. Their defense kind of sucks, and they're letting up a lot of points. So they're constantly on the attack on offense, and what better, what better player to attack a defense than Teddy Drink some gin, Junior. And there ain't even anyone on the tight end side of things that I even really like, to be honest. I have some guys written down here. CJ Fedorwitz of the Texans. You know, he's had at least five targets in 10 straight games. It's like, it's a cool stat, it's a cool number, but it's really not like, okay, my guy got five targets. What if he catches three balls for 16 yards, you know? It's whatever. So a floor of five targets is nice. It's not putting up a lot of points, but if you're in like a 14, 16 team league and all you need is like five to six points from your tight end and you think that's okay, then Fedorowicz is a nice little pickup for you there. One guy I do actually like is Jermaine Gresham. Uh, he has like 25 targets over the last four games. Scored two touchdowns over the last four games. They do get the Saints, as I mentioned. So along with JJ Nelson and Michael Floyd, Jermaine Gresham is a guy that could surprise you at that position. You know, if, if you're just throwing darts and you have no one there, no one that you trust, and, and you're looking for an upside play, Jermaine Gresham could be a nice little pickup for you. You're not gonna have to break the bank on him. And that kind of wraps it up for that. So as I've been doing the last couple of weeks, I've thrown a defense your way. We had the Ravens two weeks ago. We had the Steelers last week. Steelers ended up with like eight fancy points. So, I mean, not, not bad, but not, Fantastic. Not nah, league winning, not nah, playoff clinching shit right there. Give me a minute. I'm going to do some research on the defense and then get back to you with that. All right. So I did some digging and I got two for you only because both of them are medium owned and they're probably not both going to be available to you. 
So my first one, for obvious reasons, is Buffalo. Now, Buffalo gets to play Cleveland. It's pretty obvious that anyone playing the Cleveland Browns can be streamed as a defense. Now, you know, Cleveland's been, on average, they let up over, they let up multiple sacks per game, uh, two point something, 2.5 or whatever. Buffalo has Lorenzo Alexander, who has 10 sacks already on the season, so I'd expect him to get to the quarterback once, if not multiple times. Stephen Gilmore has five interceptions on the year. So, you know, the, the Bills defense has their games, they have their players, and this would be a game that they should play well in. RG3 back for the Browns, he looked terrible. He looked just as good as any other quarterback that was playing against them, or that has suited up for the Browns this year. So, I mean, on that, that doesn't scare me one bit. RG3 looks like he sucks again. So, Buffalo, they're owned in, I think, 60% of the league. So, they're still out there in 40% of Yahoo League. So, that's definitely a streaming option that you want to try to hop on. And another, you know, like I said, I'm going to give you two. The Houston Texans. Not a great defense by any means, especially without J.J. Watt, but for the same reason that we like Buffalo, we like Houston. They get the Jacksonville Jaguars, led by Blake Bortles, a.k.a. Blake Interception Bortles. All he does is turn the fucking ball over. He's been awful this year. I'm not going to get in the nitty-gritty. That's the key reasons to pick those guys up. Houston's only 40% owned in Yahoo League, so between those two defenses, one of them should be available to you guys. So good luck getting them. Good luck in the first week of the fantasy playoffs. Huge, 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 huge week. This should make or break. This is like, might as well rename this week Suicide Week in America. If you're out your playoffs, you're pissed, you're sad, you're samba for the rest of the week. I know my ass is. So that's gonna wrap up the week 14 slash 15 injury slash waiver wire slash, no more slashes, that's all I got for you. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thumbs it up if you liked it. Subscribe if you have any questions, any sit star questions. Leave them down below. You can uh, at me on Twitter, B-D-G-E-A-T, and hit up the website, same thing, but .com at the end. The waiver wire sheet will be up there, hopefully by the end of the day today. And uh, go check out some of the other cool shit I've been putting up. You know, I've been putting up videos of tech reviews, so I put up the Fitbit Blaze, the Microsoft Surface Pro Faux, and uh, I kind of touch on some other, some other things in the videos. So, you know, go check out the website, go check out the other videos I've been putting up, let me know what you think. Anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for me. I, again, I'm working from home right now, so I'm actually working while I'm working. Look at me, what a hero, yay. Anyways, peace.